I know, I know what you're thinking. That's a lot of, that's a lot of paper right there, isn't it? Oh my god. Hey, so nice to see you. I hate myself. Hello, you lovely bookish lot. Here I am amongst the pages of some of my favourite books um, with a really, really hot cup of tea, which is soothing me because today is time to finally record the September book haul. Um, I have been waiting for several books to arrive in the post and they have now arrived. You can hear the beeping of my smoke alarm. Has it stopped? It's fine, it's plugged in to the uh, mains and somehow it beeps occasionally. I think it just wants to tell us that, you know, it's just saying, hey, you guys okay? Just checking in. I think that's what it's doing. I think it just feels lonely. Anyway, let's sip. So today's a little bit colder, a little bit greyer, a little bit wetter, a bit more autumnal. I'm in a hoodie, but that might have to change now because I'm already getting very warm in front of this camera. Um, set myself up. Let's have a little look what books I bought this month. Oh, I haven't put them in any particular order and I do want to put them in order. I felt this could be a really short one. He says, I think I'm going to start again. I don't like what I've done so far. Do you love my cushion? I say my cushion. It's not really mine, it's Jay's. It's got hairs. It's very, very nice. What's happening here? Mm. Hello, you lovely bookish lot. How are we? Um, I've missed you. It's been so long since I spoke to you, like a couple of days for me, but um, because I now only uh, schedule videos for Wednesdays and Sundays, you may not have heard from me for a while, so, you know, hi. How are you doing? How is it going? How is September? Um, September was good for me, I think. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, and in terms of buying books, well, I actually did buy some books this month. Um, I didn't the previous month, which was a shock to the system, but this month I did. But let me explain. There's a bit of a method to my madness this month with buying books. I didn't buy many, and dare I say it, this video might actually end up being quite short. But you know what? I've said that now. I'm going to ramble. Let's have a sip and get some books out, shall we? So what happened this month was I went to the W. H. Smith's on my lunch and I saw that this beautiful book had been released. So this is Lethal White by Robert Galbraith. This is book four in the kind of Cormoran Strike uh, detective series. Uh, I'll read to you what it says on the inside cover. Um, when Billy, a troubled young man, comes to Private Eye Cormoran Strike's office to ask for his help investigating a crime he thinks he witnessed as a child, Strike is left deeply unsettled. Deeply. Uh, while Billy is obviously mentally distressed and cannot remember many concrete details, there is something sincere about him and his story. But before Strike can question him further, Billy bolts in a panic. Trying to get to the bottom of Billy's story, Strike and Robin once his assistant, now a partner in the agency, set off on a twisting trail that leads them through the back streets of London into a secretive inner sanctum within Parliament and to a beautiful but sinister manor house deep in the countryside. And during this labyrinthine investigation, what a good word, Strike's own life is far from straightforward. His newfound fame as a private eye means he can no longer operate behind the scenes as he once did. Plus, his relationship with his former assistant is more fraught than it, than it ever has been. Robin is now invaluable to strike in their business, but their personal relationship is much, much more tricky than that. So yeah, I bought this and it says on the back, there's a bunch of quotes in the back, it's lovely isn't it? Um, it says here, um, this is what made me, um, this is what changed things. Strike and Robin are just as magnetic as ever. Now I have watched the TV shows for the Cormoran Strike books. I've watched the first three BBC adaptations and I actually very much enjoyed them. I, I, I didn't I didn't think much of them afterwards but I did really enjoy watching them. But I read that and thought well I don't really remember the relationships in the TV show being magnetic and I was like am I missing something if I read this one first because I haven't read the other three. Having watched the other three I thought well I'll buy this one and read it. I fancy a bit of crime and it was on sale and the bookseller said to me that um, they were probably going to sell out of this today because it was it's been so popular and I was like okay sold so what I went and did was of course buy the other three 
wouldn't you? But I will say this about them, I've bought them all secondhand, which I feel really virtuous about. I don't know why, I just feel like I'm helping somehow by buying secondhand books. The first one I bought was The Cuckoo's Calling, and I got this from a charity shop for a pound, or it might have even been two for a pound. Uh, but this is this is book one, and it's uh, it says so here. Uh, when a troubled model falls to her death from a snow-covered Mayfair balcony, it is assumed that she has committed suicide. However, her brother has his doubts and calls in private investigator Cormoran Strike to look into the case. Strike is a war veteran, wounded both physically and psychologically, and his life is in disarray. The case gives him a financial lifeline, but it comes at a personal cost. The more he delves into the young model's complex world, the darker things get, and the closer he gets to a terrible danger. Um, so that was that's the first one, and I just thought, actually, I better read these in order, because that's what I want to do. It felt wrong. I'm already reading the Joan Esbo Harry Hall books out of order, so maybe I wanted to just do it right this time. Um, then I got The Silkworm, which is number two, um, and this one says, When novelist Owen Quinn goes missing, his wife calls him Private Detective Cormoran Strike. At first, she just thinks he's gone off by himself for a few days, as he has done before, and she wants Strike to find him and bring him home. But, as Strike investigates, it becomes clear that there is more to Quinn's disappearance than his wife realises. The novelist has just completed a manuscript featuring poisonous pen portraits of almost everyone he knows. If the novel is published, it will ruin lives, so there are a lot of people who might want to silence him. And when Quinn is found brutally murdered in bizarre circumstances, it becomes a race against time to understand the motivation of a ruthless killer, a killer unlike any Strike has encountered before. So I got that. That arrived this morning. Well, I had to go to the post office to get it, but happy days. Um, quite good, Nick, too. I'm, I'm pleased with that. And then the third one is... <laughs> this is... This is Career of Evil. Um, now, as you can see, there's no dust jacket. And I did buy this from eBay. And the picture had a dust jacket. And the description had the dust jacket. Uh, and this one does not have the dust jacket. I have sent them an email being like, was there supposed to be a dust jacket? Because, ah, oh, there's just something about me that wanted them all in hardback because I bought the fourth one in hardback. So I wanted to go and find the first three in hardback just to match on the shelf. That's all I want. Uh, and now this one hasn't got a dust jacket, which is really, really frustrating. But what am I going to do? Um, I don't know if I can read... I don't know if there's even like going to be a blurb in here. No, it just, just starts. So this is book three, Career of Evil. I'm afraid I can't read it for you. But I'm looking forward to reading it, very much so, because I've read the first one already, The Cook Was Calling. Um, it was fab. But you can see more about that in my first 100 video for that, and in my wrap-up for last month, because I speak about it there. I will link everything everywhere. So, continuing my second-hand book shop purchasing, I then found myself in another bookshop looking for those. You see, this is what happened. I was looking for those, but I didn't end up finding them in the bookshops. I found one of them in a the bookshop, and I found the other two on eBay because I couldn't find them anywhere. Um, so I went to all the charity shops around me in my local town, and I found these. Before you, before you even commit to a thought, just try to understand where I'm coming from, okay? These are Harry Potter books. And I know what you're about to say, I probably already own them, and you can see some up there, and you can see some up there as well. But these were too hard to leave there. I found these hardback versions of the original covers, the UK covers, of The Chamber of Secrets, The Prisoner of Azkaban, and The Goblet of Fire. And they're in really, really good condition considering they're second-hand. I mean, they look brill. They, they look brill. Um, there is some slight discoloration of the edges here, um, but I don't know if you can see over here on my shelf, but mine are discoloured anyway because this is where they've been on the shelves for years. So I thought, actually, they would match. And they were 99 pence each. I literally, I couldn't leave them there. I had to buy them. Uh, you guys should know what these are about, you know, book two is about the Chamber of Secrets opening, 
you know, year two at Hogwarts for Harry and Ron, year three then is the Prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, I've just listened to these both recently on Audible, and I will link those videos so where I talk about them above and below. I can't remember how I, where I, they go, here, here, down there, all of the above. And I'm listening to this one at the moment. Um, so I, I was just really chuffed with them. I just really, I just, ha I couldn't, I couldn't not get them. I know you Potterheads understand me, right? You get this. I couldn't not. And because I read the first four when they first came out, not when they first came out, when they first came to me, the first four were paperback. It was just before the release of the Order of the Phoenix. And that's book five and that came out in hardback so from then on they were hardbacks so I don't actually own these in hardback which is why I had to get them but now you understand I don't have the Philosopher's Stone in the original covers in hardback so now the hunt begins for that because I have to have it to match on my shelf you understand right I'm, I know you do I know you do please tell me you do it's not just me, is it, that would, that's mental. Um, and those are the books that I bought this month. Um, I think I, I, did, I didn't go mad. I'm, I'm trying to kind of um, uh, hold, hold on to some shred of, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Money. <laughs> I'm trying to hold on to some money and not buy everything that I want to right now. Plus, October, as we're in, uh, it is my birthday month, so I'm gonna um, ask for some books for my birthday and people who are gonna ask me, I'm gonna send them links to books and I will have those. So next month, you're gonna get a birthday book haul video and of books that I would have chosen for my birthday. I'm not against having books for my birthday that people have chosen for me. I quite like the idea of getting something that you, that you think I might like, but there's also books that I know that I want, so I'm gonna ask for them. Um, and that was my book haul, all hardbacks nearly all second hand feeling good about myself. I don't know why. It's the same feeling I have when I like, I like turn the bananas that are going um, a bit too brown into a banana cake. It's the same um, self-righteous, virtuous um, happiness. I just feel good. I feel good. Okay, so those are the books I bought. Have you guys read these books? You've probably read Harry Potter, but have you read the Robert Garbage book? Have you, wh what do you think? any good uh, and what have you guys been buying this month uh, please let me know in the comments below we shall have a chat and thank you very much for watching and I will speak to you again really very soon I'm waving now too long and I didn't say bye bye